everyone. And we are live. All right, it's Mike Wall back again with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. My energy level is through the roof today because it's got to be because I'm with my man, John Marone. John and I are going to talk to you about being the best version of yourself so that you can absolutely destroy the fourth quarter, quarter. Without further ado, here's my man, Mr. John Marone. Welcome to the Agent Revolution Podcast. Brother, what's up? What is going on, Mike Wall? How you doing, brother? How are you doing on this beautiful, beautiful day? I know, man. I know, man. I knew it. Like I, I, uh, I was watching some of your, uh, some of your videos before uh, I jumped on the show here, man. And I'm like, I had to go outside and run around the parking lot a little bit to get the blood flowing, man. You know what I mean? Because I, I know, I know when you come on, like you bring it. Energy is transferable and energy creates engagement, man. I believe um, highly that the person with the highest energy is going to win. Um, and, and I do think strategically to keep the energy up. So um, I thank you for giving it back to me. And I'm excited to go ahead and add some value to your uh, network today. Hell yeah, baby. I love it. I love it, man. And, and honestly, this could not come at a better time. I think, you know, traditionally, um, most people, they, they kind of pump the brakes a little bit in the first, fourth quarter. And, um, and the bad part about that, man, is it, it, it can affect, in real estate especially, it can affect the way you start your, your year. And so, like, what I want to talk to you about today is really getting our audience, getting that, that uh, guy or gal who's watching or listening to the show, getting them engaged in the fourth quarter. Um, like you said, creating that energy and, and treating this like, like going into the springtime, you know what I mean? And, and, and really getting some momentum. So, uh, but before we do that, man, uh, give us a little background on you, man. Tell, tell our audience a little bit about you, how you got to where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. So we could be here all day talking about that. I'll kind of give you the long story short. So, uh, you know, growing up, um, it, you know, I, I, the way I grew up wasn't, you know, I wasn't completely, you know, with the rich kids, I wasn't with the poor kids. I was, I was mediocre, but unfortunately, you know, my parents had made some bad decisions that then put us into some situations that weren't the best. Right. And, and through addiction in, in our family, those bad decisions happened. Now, starting around 12, 13 years old, I started taking on my own identity. And that identity was the same thing, right? I became addicted. And, and Mike wasn't just addicted to, to drugs. I was addicted to violence. I was addicted to negativity, to drama, to making bad decisions. And a lot of that addiction boiled up, boiled up, and they put me behind bars. Um, and that wasn't it, though. You know, you think that you get locked up. You think you have all these things happen to you. And that's the moment it changes. And, and that wasn't what happened. Um, I'd probably say about three years later, I actually was in Hurricane Sandy. Mm -hmm. And through Hurricane Sandy, we almost lost our life, my wife and I. Um, and I was up in the attic, and, and there was five feet of water. So the water is climbing rung by rung by rung. And I'm sitting up there and I'm freezing cold because it's October in New Jersey. And I just remember looking back at my family. I actually had my mother, my father there as well. And I remember looking back at them saying something I've never really said before, at least not in this context. And that was, what kind of impact have I made? And it was weird for me because it was always about income for me, right? Income solved all my problems, so I thought. Yeah. And so I remember touching ground in the shelter uh, 24 hours later and I said, man, you know, I, I made this promise to myself that I'm going to make an impact in this world, but I don't know how. And that was the first aha. That was the first breakthrough because being from Jersey, being Italian, being a hot-headed guy I was, I thought I knew everything. Mm -hmm. And so realizing and raising my hand saying I don't know what I don't know was my first and biggest opportunity to grow. Yeah. From there, I realized that I need to find out the answers to my questions. So I digested and I investigated the best minds in the world. I studied them. I figured out what they were doing. I figured out what their habits were. And from that, I was able to create a life um, that I was finally proud of. Um, and most importantly, be able to continually grow and help others grow. So through the process of my own healing and the process of me being able to build my life up to where it's at today, I've been able to regurgitate that information and build processes and systems to help others create that ultimate version of themselves and truly design the life they've always wanted to live. Yeah. So now, you know, I'm a conversion specialist with Commissions Inc. So we help people um, increase their contact to appointment set ratio about 33%. We've had 4,000 agents through the course. 
Um, I'm also a mastermind facilitator for them. So we have the best, the best agents, some of the best agents in the country as well as Canada. And we meet every, uh, about every four or five months. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I'm a growth expert. And simply what that means is I help people give, and I give them the tools to transform their life. And I do that on stages. And I also do that through my coaching uh, platforms, whether it's group coaching, whether it's my course, uh, my workshops, things of that nature. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. And, and one of the things I like, I think so much about you is that you're one of those people that's figured out that it, it skill set without the proper mindset is essentially useless. You know what I mean? I mean and, and, and the reason why that's happened, I think, in our industry is because it was really easy to package and sell skill set, but not so much. Um, uh, both of those skills intertwined, uh, the mindset and the skill set. And, 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 and really be able to, to make an impact on their business. Because, you know, the reality of it is, if I teach you a bunch of stuff, um, I, I teach you lead conversion, I teach you to call expires and for sell by owners, and you haven't overcome that, you know, that, that fear or that limiting belief, then the reality of it is, you're just going to be a person with a bunch of skills who doesn't take any action. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And the and, and thing is, man, you know, people, they look at skills and they, and they can monetize that. Like you said, when you look at mon mindset, you don't think you can. But when it comes down to if you don't mind your mind, the skills will never be able to be utilized when they need to be utilized. Yeah. You know, if you think about it, if like you said, if I gave you the, the best leads in the world, if I gave you the best scripts, the best dialogues, I gave you all these tools. But yet you wake up in the morning and you're not motivated yet. You want to be calling for two hours a day and you're getting punched in the mouth over and over again. What's going to keep you to keep going? Is it going to be your skills or is it going to be the mindset? Yeah. And I truly believe that the mind can make heaven hell or it can make hell heaven. Mm -hmm. and it's in those moments that you want to quit. It's in those moments where you just want to distract yourself and be busy versus productive. It's in the moments where you want to get back down to being comfortable and safe that you truly need to go ahead and mind your mind and say all the skills I've learned are useless without the mindset. You know, they talk about 10,000 uh, 10, hours. Yeah. Right? 10,000 hours to master your craft. Now, I'm a believer in that, but. I don't think that the 10,000 hours is important on your skills as it is on your mind. I'd rather you work 10,000 hours on your mind and truly building a callous mind so that there's anything you're up against, any adversity, you have the tools and you have the mental ca capability to bust through that and truly overcome them time and time again and use the skills that you spent all the time building up. Yeah. Yeah, man. So what... When you, I mean, obviously you're right in the thick of things, man. And and we've been, a, a full disclosure, this is not a Commissions Inc. commercial. Uh, I am a Commissions Inc. user. I have been for um, about four years now. Um, I love the product. Um, I love that you come with the product. And um, we've uh, we've been through the conversions uh, courses. Uh, most of my agents have before. It's a requirement here. Um, but, but what I want to know, like from you, man, because you're on the front lines, you know what I mean? I, I want to know, like, there's a huge disconnect in our in our in our industry, right? And 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 so what I want to know from you, man, since you're on the front lines every day, is that what creates that? What is that disconnect, man? And and, and I don't mean just it's not a mindset. It, there's something there that prevents people from doing what they're supposed to do in order to have the success they need in the real estate. And I, so I want you to speak uh, more specifically to that right now because. This will this will actually be a good conversation for those people who are transitioning into the fourth quarter who are thinking about, oh, this is a slower time of year. You know, they come up with all those all those excuses. So let's talk about that. Yeah. And, and the first thing I want to say is if you're not waking up every single day, like it's the biggest game of your life, you need to reevaluate what your why is. Right. And you need to evaluate what that passion is, because when I wake up, I don't know if you ever saw Ray Lewis come out of the tunnel. Right. Yeah. Like he comes out of the tunnel, man. It's just it is lights out. People get scared of him. When I come out of the shower, when I get into my office, that's that's how I want to feel. That's how I want to look. So I do things to prepare myself. So I think the disconnect really comes with a they're 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 seeing what people around them are doing and thinking it's okay to fall back down to their level. I hear it all the time. People are like, "Oh, you know, I'm doing pretty well. well what, are you, what are you doing well to? I mean, like your brother, your sister." Look, they're making $60,000 a year. Don't judge yourself to them. Oh, I'm making 100 calls a day. You're making 100 calls a day. You think that's good? Yeah, why? Because people around me are doing 70. That doesn't mean it's good. 
Brian Moses, a mentor of mine, told me something once and it, it changed my mind. So I used to always crush people in sales. Like I'm not going to pat myself on the back, but I would crush everybody. Right. And I remember sitting there and Brian was talking to me and he said, man, you're doing pretty well. You're number one again. I said, yeah. He goes, you got a big smile on your face. You're getting some good money. I said, absolutely. He said, what's the matter with you? I said, what do you mean? He said, you should be running laps around who you were yesterday, right? You're beating everybody every month by 10, every month by 10. Why are you not beating everybody by 20? Because you get comfortable, right? And, and with each level you get to, you have to realize that there's another level above that and another level above that. So I think people, A, they don't have a strong enough why to keep them motivated. Yeah. B, I think they're playing the game compared to the people around them. And C, I don't think they are waking up every single day like it's the biggest game of their life and truly taking advantage of every opportunity. See, we all know somebody that lost their life way too early, right? We all know somebody that wishes they just had that one more conversation with the person they love, wishing they could just hug the person they love, wishing they could just have one more visit to the ocean to feel the ocean breeze. We all know somebody. But yet we take every moment for granted, right? We take every every moment of every single day and we just do things to be busy versus productive. And that comes down to, I don't think people's why is strong enough. I think that human nature forces us to be average. And I think it's hard to beat human nature. Yeah. So I think everybody needs to wake up and say, I don't care if it's the fourth quarter, man. I don't care if it's the first quarter. Like we should be playing in 90 day increments. And that being said, every 90 days is a year, right? And so what I mean by that is that if you crunch down your year into four quarters and you just crush every single quarter versus, all right, I'm going to set my goals in January and I have a year to hit these. Yeah. Like every quarter you should be setting new goals. And then realizing that lots of times when you set these new goals, you're going to have to sacrifice certain things because who they are today, everybody watching this, look, who you are today is exactly perfect for what you have. Right. Like, and my let talks about it. Like and, and who you are today is exactly perfect for what you have. So I'm here to tell you that you're going to have to reveal that new version. And the only way for you to do that is to fail often, fail better. It's for you to go out and, and truly, truly put yourself in pressure situations and ask yourself every single morning, like, what's the goal today? Yeah. I don't think people ask themselves that enough. They ask themselves that maybe at the end of the year for the new year, maybe, you know, beginning of every quarter, but every morning do you wake up and say, what's the goal today? And it's not just the goals in your business guys. It's the goals in all equities of life. We're made up of six areas of life. And I see so many agents, man, that are just like, they're crushing it in one area. Maybe they're killing it in sales, but their health sucks yeah. or their relationship is dropping. And they're like, man, how do I just find this balance? That's probably the number one question I get. How do I find this balance? There's no such thing as balance, but I believe in integration. Yeah. So if you're asking yourself, what's the goal today in all six equities in my personal life, my health, my relationships, my finances, my business, right? If you're asking yourself these questions for each and every equity, you're going to start getting better answers. Mm -hmm. So what it comes down to is your quality of life is proportionate to the quality of questions you ask yourself. I don't think these people are having this disconnect or asking themselves the right questions every day yeah. because, because, because they don't want to be vulnerable. Yeah. That's an interesting way to look at it, man. And I think that, you know, it is so true. Like we, we actually, we start doing our business planning, our strategic business planning in October, right? Because we like, we like to hit the ground. We like to start the year in November and that way we, you know, when December 31st rolls into January one of the next year, we're fully acclimated in, in what we need to do to have success for, for 2020. But like, you know, so for you, it's like you, I, I talk to my team. It's like people, like people spend more time making a grocery list than they do planning out their goals for their life that like they really do that. And, and, and it's, it's so crazy, man. It's like, because it, it's such an important, it's such an, when you sit down to actually make, write out your goals and make them tangible so that you can see, touch and feel them. It's the first step in actually creating that reality for yourself. And how would you ever think to spend more time, you know, um, going, uh, planning out lunch meat and, and buying what you're, you know, getting what you're going to get for dinner over, over your, your, over your life plan. And, and, and so like, I, I love that, 
you know, for, for you, it's like you're you're you have a very clear vision on where you want to go. I, I know you probably have a, a vision board or you've and I know you've written out your goals for sure. And and so like when people are trying to create this reality for their stuff, I it's my personal opinion that I think most people are sleepwalking through life. I, I think I think that they have they're only giving as much as the as the people around them expect, which is not a whole heck of a lot. And I talked about this on a live video I did this morning. It's that so one of the most dangerous places you can ever be, um, whether it's in real estate, it doesn't matter where you work, is a place that it enc that encourages you and pats you on the back for your mediocrity. Um, while in, in, in those times, it seems like those people care, those they love and care for you. The reality of it is they don't. They mm -hmm. because if they did, they would always try to pull the best out of you, and that's why it's always great to be in an environment that that practices accountability. And, and, and is, is caring enough to confront you when you're not, when you're not at your best, when you're not doing what you need to do in order to hit the goals that you put on that piece of paper. You know, I think people aren't okay with getting in an environment where they're being told what they need to hear versus what they want to hear. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that comes down to being coachable. Like you have to be coachable, but the coaches, the, the, the leaders that are in your office they have to tell you what you need to hear now, what you want to hear. I mean, anybody, if you're a leader out there watching this, and, and, and I think everybody is because you have eyes on you, whether it's your family, it's your community, it's your wife, it's your husband, you know, it's your mom, it's your dad. You're a leader, right? You're leading somebody. And, and I just challenge you to the people that you're leading. Number one is, are you living to the highest standard possible, right? Achieve, achieving the highest results. Because if you raise your standards, you raise your results. Number two is, are you truly telling the people that you love and lead what they need to hear versus what they want to hear. Yeah. And on the flip side of it, if somebody is sitting there right now and they're in a place that they know is basically keeping them at average, but they're comfortable, that's your fault. Like raise your hand, own up to it, right? I always say ownership is own your, you know what? And then it's owner shift. What I mean by that is now you got to change it. Now you got to change it. And guess what? It, it, you know, no matter what we're looking at here, I mean, whether you're in real estate or another industry, you have a choice. You're going to suffer the pain of regret or the pain of discipline. That's your choice. Yeah. The issue comes down to is most people walk through life. You said sleepwalking. They walk through life with the pain of regret until it's almost too late, right? Until they're 20 pounds overweight, until they're in the red and they haven't hit their numbers, until their mortgage hasn't been paid. Now the regret is in their face. But if you're self-aware every single day and say, am I walking in the pain of discipline or regret? Then you ask yourself the right questions. You start getting better answers. Yeah. And, and I used to be the woe is me. I used to uh, victim mentality. You know, I was, I was, when I was in jail, when I was living on the streets, man, um, you know, I was living in motels. It was funny because I always, even I lived in those situations, I was always like, Poor me, never good things ever happened to me, the way I was brought up, you know, where I come from. And now in a different mindset, in, in a victor mindset, I always find it to where it's like, what can I do differently to change my situation? Yeah. Right. Versus my situation is the reason why I am here. It's like sometimes your circumstances, um, it, you know, and what you're born into, it's not your fault, but it's your damn responsibility to change it. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in habits, man, like a huge believer in habits. And, and I think that if I was a fly on the wall of most people watching this and I looked at your habits, I'd be able to tell you what your future looks like. I'll be the genie that you need. Just let me hang out on a, you know, be a fly on the wall for 24 hours. And I guarantee you, I could draw out the blueprint of what your life's going to look like. Guarantee you. Yeah. And, and the reason why I know is because I've lived both sides, bro. I lived both sides of this. You know what I mean? It's, it's. Yeah. It's not like I've been this, you know, high energy, positive habit, action taken individual my whole life. Absolutely not. I was yeah. the complete opposite. So I know the difference. Um, and, and I promise you, you know, if, if you're not waking up every day with a fire under you and you don't ask yourself the right questions and, you know, ask yourself truly, you know, what success looks like. You talked about it before. I don't think people even ask themselves what success looks like in their health, their relationship. They don't have clarity. And if you don't ask the world for clarity, it's definitely not going to respond with it. So here's a question for you, my man, because like, and you, you know, you said it yourself, like you, you got to that point to where, you know, regret, 
almost it showed it itself to you and it, it, put, it put you it put it was in your face man you know what i mean so like and and you you know you had to do you had to take inventory on on how you lived your life up until that moment so here's the hard thing brother i'm gonna this this one this is what i'm gonna make you think man it's like how do people who are who are not facing that moment right now right they have not they've not come to the point of regret yet how do those people flip the script I love that question. First off, I think a lot of people watching this are there, right? Yeah. Like I haven't hit rock bottom, right? Or, or I haven't come up against that, that wall of regret. Here's the thing. If you're not living in self-awareness, that's the first thing. So have you truly taken inventory of where you're at? Is it where you want to be? So that's the first thing, right? And, and, and stop sleepwalking. Like you said, where you're at, is it where you currently want to be? So I just need everybody to stop for a second. Look at their life and say, is this what I want? Because if it's not what I want, now I need to find out, okay, what do I want? And here's the kicker, man. Who do I need to become in between that time to get there? Yeah. Because sometimes the regret, man, doesn't happen until you take your last breath. And so if, if you're okay with the possibility of never seeing regret but always playing average, then stay in that lane. But if you understand that, there's probably more you can be doing, even though it may be scary, even though people are probably definitely going to doubt you. They're going to be whispering, even though there's limited beliefs are going to come in your head. If you truly know that there is more out there for you on this earth, because you get one damn shot of it. If you know that, stop for a second and say, why would I wait for that moment of regret? goes back to what I said before. We know people that their life ended too early, yeah. right? And so when their life ended early, what did you think about them? Man, he had so much potential. Man, he could have done so much more. Yeah. Man, even if someone dies and in, in, in maybe they're 70s, 80s, maybe you say the same thing. Mm, he had his chance. He could have done so much more. Don't be that because when somebody comes up to your grave, they're not going to see when you're born and then when you died. They're not going to care about the phrase necessarily. They're going to care about that dash. They're going to care about that legacy. They're going to care about how you made them feel and what you did to change the world around you. You don't need to be the, the, the world changer. When I talk about that, like be the Bill Gates and, you know, the, the Steve Jobs, you don't need to be that. I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to change your world. I'm asking everybody on here to do me one favor. If you have a kid, if you have a son, if you have a daughter, I have to ask you something right now. And this changed my life, man. If that little girl, that little boy was standing next to you during every decision you make, would you make a different decision? If you knew, if I knew my beautiful little girl, Aria was sitting right next to me with every decision I make, but I make better decisions. Yeah. Damn right. I will. So have that mindset, have that mindset of she's watching, he's watching. And, and, and guess what? Like if you don't have a little girl, you don't have a little boy. I want you to ask yourself if somebody is looking up to you, those who are looking up to you, if they were standing there, what would you do? And I always think about this because we look at the Steve Jobs, right? We, we look at the Tony Robbins and all these things. And, and I just look at it and I say, man, it's like it wasn't like their family tradition was always rock star, billionaires, life changers. Somebody came across their family like Tony decided one day he's no longer going to allow that last name to be drugged through the mud. He's going to change the, the trajectory of the future of that last name. Yeah. And so I take that into high, high um, responsibility that I'm changing my last name's future. And every decision I make matters to more than just me. Right. You know, it ties back, man. It, you know, if I didn't wake up early this morning and I didn't do what I needed to do, what would have happened, right? So if I didn't wake up early this morning and I didn't get all the stuff I needed to get done, I didn't hit the gym, on our call, I wouldn't have as much energy. If I don't have as much energy, I might not be able to connect with certain people, therefore not be able to help them, therefore not being able to help them change their life, therefore not being able to help them change their future of their family's legacy. So what I did this morning by waking up, it wasn't just for me. It was for yeah. everybody that came into my presence today. And, and, and I just take that into high consideration. I never used to uh, because I used to be so selfish. Um, I'm selfish in the morning by taking time for me, um, but in the end, it's way bigger than me every single decision. And I just try to play that in my head all the time. This decision, yeah. what would Aria think? What would your daughter think? What would your daughter think? 
uh, because shame is not good to live with, man. No. And everybody's had that moment where we had shame. And it's something that's very hard to even talk about when you have shame in life. Yeah. And you rec- we kind of run away from it. And so the best apology for shame is change of behavior. And so whatever it is that maybe you have shame about, and every time you try to be good, you're like, but that mistake I made really is who I am. That's my identity. Let's change our behavior and let's change our character by taking action to what we know is the right thing. And, and so I just ask everybody to think about those things when you're making decisions because we are the sum of the decisions we make. Uh, and it just helps you make better decisions along the way. Yeah, dude, it's so – that's money, man, by the way. And, and like I, I think that, that you got to stop giving yourself a pat on the back for making the easy decisions. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I think we have a tendency to do that, and, and we, we seek, um, we seek um, acceptance or victory – in making the easy decisions like it's for me deciding not to go out and kill somebody today that that's an easy decision to make you know what i mean but like for me you know picking up the the chocolate chip cookie at lunch me not picking that up like that might be a little bit tougher decision right because like there's that moment where i take that first bite of that chocolate chip cookie and it's so good man you know what i mean <laughs> and i get to enjoy that and and i eat that cookie and then I got to live with the decision of what happens after that, right? And, and, and what happens in the moment, like you said, it's winning those little micro battles. It's it, it, Those are the ones that add up and determine who you will become. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, are you going to show up at 9 a.m. to make phone calls after 30 realtors have already called the expireds? Or are you going to show up at 745 and be the first one to hit them? You know what I mean? It's yeah. winning those little micro battles. Those are the ones you want to give yourself a pat on the back for because those are the ones that end up making the biggest impact because they have a compound effect, right? Yeah, so true. And, and it's, you know, I, I would I would just challenge everybody to write down what are you willing to sacrifice to create the life you want? Like, are you willing to sacrifice, you know, going out and partying on Friday night? Are you willing to sacrifice, um, you know, possibly – the leading relationships that are affecting you in a negative way. Are, are you willing to sacrifice, uh, you know, the, the, I gotta be right in every situation. What are you willing to sacrifice? Show me that. And then we could try to figure out, Hey, okay, what you're willing to sacrifice. Now you can create that. Um, I don't think a lot of, I don't think enough people are willing to sit down and say, I'm willing to sacrifice these things. I'm willing to um, not give in to my limited beliefs. I'm willing to not stay up until midnight. And once you figure out what you need to sacrifice, it's a game changer because it's self-awareness, you know, I, and I don't think that you could replace, like, I don't think you could put in a new habit guys, unless you figure out what habit that that's going to replace, right? What are your bad habits? Let's figure it out. Now let's figure out what the trigger is. Okay. And then let's figure out how do I, if I, that trigger is always there. Let me give you an example. So maybe sometimes let's just say someone's driving to work and they hit traffic every day. Like there's no doubt, like they, they're going to hit traffic. It's just where they live. And that's a trigger for them to be like, this ride sucks. I this that. And it just triggers them into a negative state. Yeah. Okay, well, we can't get rid of that trigger, right? Can't get rid of it. So what are we going to do? Let's now change our perspective. When we have that moment, that trigger, now we got to change and have a empowering habit of maybe speaking in gratitude, maybe putting on a podcast, whatever it might be. So figure out what your bad habits are, what the triggers are. If the trigger can't be replaced, just replace the habit that's after it. Mm-hmm. If the trigger can be replaced, maybe it's a negative person. That person always calls you and it puts you into a downward spiral and you're like, I don't want to pick this up. Well, that trigger can be um, eliminated if you have the right conversation or maybe you just you know, go ahead and let them know what the new standards are, what the new emotional guardrails are. So, you know, I, I think what it comes down to is just making sure that people's habits align with what their goals are, right? And, and, and it comes down to the, the environment you talked about before. Is your environment conducive to what you want out of life? And if it's not, what the hell are you going to do about it? Because it's no, one, no, no one's going to do it for you. Yeah. Right? No one's going to do it for you. And time's a ticking, man. Time's a ticking. Time is a so, ticking, man. That's okay. for sure. So, you know, and one of the, one of my favorite quotes is the old Jim Rohn quote is, you know, you are the sum of the, you're the, the, the sum of the, the five people you spend the most time around. I know I butchered that a little bit, but you know, the context there. And mm-hmm. it, it is true because like, 
you know, if you want to raise your game, like I always, I'm looking to be the dumbest guy in the room. Everywhere I go, I want to be the dumbest guy in the room, man, because I know that then I, then I'm, I've got the best opportunity for improvement. You know what I mean? And it's so like, you, if you, you're, you're in a dangerous place, if you're, if you're at a place to where, you know, you're the top salesperson because, you know, you've essentially hit a ceiling and, and, and what's really hard about getting out an, of an environment like that is most people there are celebrating you. And so they're pulling, and by doing that, they're pulling you back in, they're pulling you back in, but they're, they're also keeping you at that level to where you don't have an opportunity to raise your game. And like, one of the things that, you know, that, that, that I've come, I've come across in our industry is that there's really four types of people, right? There's people who, who don't know what to do and they don't, they're, they're not seeking, they're not, they're not seeking to get any better. There's people who don't know what to do and maybe they're in a bad environment but they're looking to get better. And then there's people that know what to do and just don't do it. Those are probably the worst. And then there's people that, that know what to do and they're doing it. Right. And so really this, this, the, the shows like this are, are meant to connect with people who know what to do and they're doing it. And the people that don't know what to do, but they're seeking, right. The other people, you know, good luck. Can't help you. Hopefully. Uh, but, and, and so like the, but, the whole reason I, I tell you that is because like, you know, there's so many people that get into real estate and fail. I mean, the failure rate in our industry is enormous. I think it's something like 85% of agents, they fail within the first 12 months. You don't know this, but like we, we did some statistical research in the three boards that we're in, in Columbus, Cincinnati, and Dayton. And the, the numbers were true for each board. Over 50% of the agents in those local boards hadn't gotten a paycheck at all this year, not even a pay. And, and in the previous months, anywhere from 70 to 74% last month, 70 to 74% between the three boards didn't get a check. Do you know how insane that is, man? Insane. Like what, what other industry could that ever even happen in other than real estate? You know, but that, that goes back to like when, when I do the conversion day, people are like, they don't realize that the consumer 86 is it's a stat 86 percent of home buyers do not think their agent understands their problem and they're right because most agents aren't skilled enough to facilitate a conversation that then facilitates a sale they try to go facilitate the conversion right away yeah. right I mean, tell me that you know 50 percent didn't have a commission i believe it because consumers are seeing the bs that most real estate agents are are putting them through, right? And, and now there's all these different models that are trying to innovate the, the industry. So it's super important for you to lead with need and add as much value as possible. And you don't do that with, with commission's breath, right? You do that by building a conversation and showing that you have a solution to their problem. But you can't figure that out if all you're being is a glorified Applebee server. If you're just asking how many bedroom, four, how many bath, two. Like if you're not getting so deep into their why that it almost makes them cry, you're not doing them service. This is the biggest transaction of their life. Yeah. Like take that serious. Take it so serious that you want to find out exactly what their why is. Maybe it's not that, you know, they want to get closer to work. Maybe they want to get closer to work because they're driving four hours and they're missing their daughter's recital. He's not even ever to be able to be there for her to wake up. Yeah. And this is every single day. Now, when I ask you and you tell me, John, I still want to wait 12 months, but I say, Mike, look, I totally understand, but let me ask you this. If I were to find you that perfect house, four bedroom, two bath, and that saved you 10 hours a week so you can go to your daughter's recitals, so you could be there and make breakfast for her when she wakes up, would you consider moving sooner? Like that's so much more powerful. And the reason why I bring that little script up is because it doesn't shock me that 75% of people, um, you know, basically leave the industry. It does it because people get in here thinking that they're going to have freedom thinking that, you know, I'm going to get in this industry and I'm going to crush it. It's not that easy. Yeah, it's not. And, and you said before about the, some of the five people you hang around most with, like that's, that's basically who you become. Mm -hmm. I go an inch, eh, a foot deeper. I say proximity is power. And, and what I mean by that is yes, the people, but also the places and the things. Mm -hmm. The TV you watch, right? Like the bars you go into. Yeah. Like, you know, let me give you an example. First off, Darren Hardy told me to stop watching the news and it changed my life. So that's just a side note. If you watch the news, stop. Just, just stop. Um, it will change your life. Secondly, 
I'm like a big Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, like the drama shows. I loved the drama shows. Um, and me and my wife, that was our thing. Like we kind of connected during that time. And so I just remember I was just kind of gauging how I felt the next morning after watching these shows. I kind of woke up groggy, kind of woke up eh, a little bit on edge, a little bit of a bad mood. And I said, it just seems too much of a coincidence that it's every Thursday. And I watch these shows on Wednesday. And I said, you know what? Let me just try something here. And so I did what's very hard to do. And anybody watching this could tell you. Stop watching one of your favorite shows mid-season. Like that right there, <laughs> dedication. I was like, it was so hard for me. And while my wife is still watching it, by the way. It wasn't like we just cut it off. Yeah. So fast forward, I stopped watching these shows. And my quality of life has skyrocketed. But most importantly, I realized proximity is power. Watching those shows, what it does to our mind, what it does to our thoughts, even though it's not that immediate feeling, um, what it does long term, it really affects you. So if you're trying to get on the phone and make dials, if you're trying to you know, be this positive person, I, I just want you to look around. Proximity yeah. is power. What are you watching? What are you doing at night? What are you doing in the morning? Because to me, the most important four hours of our day, the two when we wake up, the two before we go to sleep. What are you doing during those four hours? What are you doing? And if you're not doing something that's going to empower you, that aligns with your goals, you need to change it. Yeah, man, so good. That's such that's such good advice, man. Um, like I, my morning ritual is like one. Like you talked about being a little selfish at the beginning of the day, and I think I think that in that selfishness, you know, you're creating a better self. You're creating a better person, so that when you are with your family or with um, your business associates or friends um, that you are better for them because you took those those uh, those minutes or hours to be a little selfish to work on yourself so that you could be a better person. Absolutely. And like the morning routine for me, man, is huge. And I, I notice like if I miss my morning routine, dude, it, like I'm a totally different person. Like if I if I don't go to the gym, like people people literally think they still think even today that that if you go to the gym, like you're not going to have as much energy throughout the day. And, and, and it, that is the absolute, it, it's a myth. The, 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 actually, if you go to the gym, you will actually have more energy throughout the day than if you didn't. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. so getting those morning rituals, right. Getting that mind, right. Um, it really prepares you for the day. Like, I mean, the first thing I do when I get out of bed is I go downstairs and I, I, I brew coffee I grab, uh, I grab the Bible. Uh, so whatever you, you know, whatever you decide, um, you know, spiritually you like to do, uh, I read it. I read a couple verses. Then I, I do a 10 minute meditation. Then I, you know, I drink my coffee and then I'm off to the gym for an hour. Right. And then that's the way I start every day. And when, I, if I, if I do that every day, listen, man, it's lights out. I, Cause I can come with that John Marone energy. If I do that, man, you know what I mean? See, but here's the thing, brother. I think a lot of people, and I got this all the time. It's like, yeah, but I had a rough night or I had this meeting or, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a hotel. So our habits create our future. Our habits create our future. Our circumstances don't. So stop allowing your circumstances to dictate your habits because your habits create your future. People are like, man, what time do you go to bed when you, if you wake up at five? It doesn't matter what time I go to bed because no matter what, I'm going to wake up what time I said I'm going to wake up. Yeah. And, you know, I, you, and you, you actually – do your gratitude every morning. What happens if you don't want to do it? I do it. Like there's plenty of times I don't want to do the things I don't want to, you know, I need to do, but that's the difference between success and non-success. Yeah. So do the things you don't want to do when you know you need to do them. And how Elrod, a friend of mine told me very simple. It's either the right decision or it's an easy decision. Lots of times the easy decisions are the wrong decisions. The easy decision to stay in bed. The easy decision to say, I'll just do it tomorrow. The easy decision to stop calling after an hour. The easy decisions are usually not the right ones. And I asked myself this one question to change my world. Change my world. It, it, actually, it's a two-parter. And every time I'm faced with a decision, I ask myself, does this get me closer or further away from my goals? Yeah. And it's as simple as grabbing that cookie, like you said. It's as simple as meditating. Like you say, I'm sure not every morning you want to meditate. Yeah. I'm sure not every morning you want to go to the gym. So if you ask yourself that and say, it gets me closer. But here's what you need to do. Follow it up with, why is that so important? Well, it's so important to me because, you know, uh, my daughter deserves the best father that she could have. And I know by doing this today, I become better today than I was yesterday. 
And so if you ask yourself those two part of questions, man, it just changes your world. Um, but it, it's if people are not willing to just do something so simple, which is ask yourself better questions. Um, and, and therefore they're not going to achieve the results they want. It's that simple. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't yeah. land on your lap. You know, it, you gotta, you gotta work for it up here, it, you know, versus out here as, as much. The biggest battle you'll ever face is who you are today and who you're trying to become. Yeah. And it's an internal battle. Like it's a battleground every day, man. Like your limited beliefs, human nature, other people, TV, more limited beliefs. These are all hitting you every single day, all day. Yeah. So to battle every single day to become that person, it's not easy. I get it, guys. But to me, what's the alternative? Waste my time here on this earth and be average? Right. Or do something pretty impressive. And if impressive is just giving my daughter the life that she deserves – that's plenty good enough for me. Golden baby. It's golden, man. So, all right. So, you know, obviously we got a, we got a, a big audience of real estate agents and, you know, we're, we, we, we got everybody from people who are just getting into the business that listen to the show and people who are, have been in the business for two or three years, people who've, who have been in the business uh, for a long time and are very successful. And so like what, to those people that, you know, who are just starting out, man, and, 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 or maybe they're just, they've just decided that real estate is their journey or they've been in real estate for maybe a year or two and just haven't seen the success that they want to have. Uh, they've paid for programs. They've, you know, you know, they, they, they've, they've made a, they've made an effort to try and get better, but it just hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. What do you say to those people, John? You haven't made the right efforts. You haven't been consistent. That's the first thing. <clears throat> I think people lie to themselves to make themselves feel good. We talked about before, like what's effort. What do you mean by effort, right? Like, yeah. like that's the first thing. Really take in, like, audit your effort. <laughs> like, is it real effort? Um, or did you give up too easily? And, and realize that instant, this is huge for anybody listening. Oh, this is huge. Instant gratification creates long-term regret. You got to fall in love with the process. It's, it's, it's 12 rounds. Like, be willing and love getting punched in the face because it's going to happen. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. So if you find out a way to, to, to fall in love with this process and realize I'm here for the long term, I'm here for the long game, it changes everything. If you're trying to find that, that, that dollar right now, if you're trying to get that one deal right now, and not worrying about the future, not worrying about that, that, that long term, you're always going to be on this roller coaster. Always yeah. on this roller coaster. So the effort, A, I don't know. I got I to gotta check your effort out. Like, Be honest with yourself. Like, is there more in the tank? Did you give up too easily? Secondly, stop going for instant gratification. It's going to create long-term regret. Yeah. Fall in love the process. Love getting punched in the face. Say, may I have another? And keep going at it every single day. Yeah. Every day. You know, pe people don't realize that you don't have to be the most skilled person to be the best agent. You don't have to be the most skilled person in your office to blow everybody out of the water. I promise you. Confidence comes from belief within, right? And belief that I'm hungrier than every single person, right? I line up against anybody and I'll get punched in the face over and over again. And as I'm getting punched in the face and getting back up, you're slowly falling down. The thing is, I'm here for the long run and I'm here and I'm hungry because my why is strong enough. So the people that are around you now, if they're more skilled than you, it's okay. Build your skill up, believe in yourself. And truly fall in love with the process. Yeah. Fall in love with the process. Build that internal confidence that is irreplaceable, right? right? Like it's, it, it's an inside job. Build that confidence up. And, and the way you do that is, yes, building your skill, but also understanding the words you're saying, the thoughts that you're having, and being able to not control them, but be able to finesse them to benefit you. Because our mind doesn't know the difference between real and fake. Yeah. Like, so if... You're out there and say, oh, this is hard. I don't know how I'm going to keep, keep going. I, guess what? You're, you're, it's, a, it's a sure enough syndrome. If you say you can't do something, sure enough, you're not going to be able to. Yeah. Right? So, like, stop feeding your mind the things that you don't want and start living in a world that's not necessarily real right now, but that you want. I mean, look, I truly believe I manifested a human into this world. I was told for nine years 
that we couldn't have kids. And I did a lot of things to try to have kids, believe me. <laughs> and you know, it didn't work until I truly put the power of thought and manifesting into it. And even when the doctor still told me no after having my surgery and everything, I still believed. I still looked at the vision board every day. I still wished upon it. And now I have a beautiful girl. But sure enough, if I believed everybody, if sure enough, if I was in it just for the short term, I would have never had her. Which means, bro, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now because my life would have went to a downward spiral, guaranteed. Yeah, so that's good, man. It's just a, it's it, it's more than just right now, like. If you give up this, if you try to go for instant gratification, if you don't believe in yourself, like close your eyes, man. We always close our eyes and look at the future when we do things right. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes and think about the things that you're not going to have. If you don't, you know, overcome your fears, if you don't fall in love with the process, if you don't face rejection with pride, if you don't do these things, what's your life look like in five years? Yeah. What's your family look like? Who's at the dinner table? Do you have a dinner table? Like get so deep and, and I hold my pain and my pleasure, in my right pocket and my left pocket. That's the only way people make decisions, man. Like when you guys are talking to clients, realize that pain or pleasure will create an action from them. You, you will get a decision from them. You got to find that pain or pleasure, but also where's your pain or pleasure? I have in my pockets all the time because when I don't want to do things, sometimes I got to pull out that pain or sometimes they'll pull out the pleasure. Yeah. And use it for me to take that massive, aggressive, empowering action towards what I really want. Yeah, dude, that's that's great, man. Like this is so this is the second show that I've done on mindset stuff. My the first show I did was kind of happenstance and it was with my man, John Kitchens. I don't know if you know John I Kitchens. Love, I love Kitchens, man. Yeah. Great guy. But 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 this is probably one of the, the 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 best shows, my most favorite shows that I've done, because this is my topic, man. And mm -hmm. and. I understand you understand it, that that one of the major reasons that there is a huge disconnect in our industry is not a lack of skills. That's not it, man. It's a lack of, it's a lack of having the proper mindset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so like there's guys like here you, you out there. Me. Go ahead and write in the comment. What'd you say, brother? What'd you say? You got me? Uh oh, we'll bring him right here. I got, I, I got you, but can you hear me? Well, you at Mike? Where you at, Mike? Can you hear me? Hang on, just a sec, brother. I'll be right back. So I'm back. Hopefully, Mr. Marone comes on soon. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, listen, man, we live in a world so if, it, that if, if you get through an entire podcast or broadcast without having some technical difficulties, you are a very special person. So we almost made it, man. That, it is, we, were close. We, we were almost perfect. Yeah. So there's the, there's the part we edit out, right? For the to make it to make it per Facebook worthy or or, or uh, social media worthy. But man, listen, this has been so much fun, man. Like like I said before, I was talking to you about my, my my the show I did with Kitchens, and I love doing the mindset stuff because that's where the that's where the true problem is. And it's good to see that there are people like you out there that are working on helping people, um, you know, gain that perspective on having the right mindset. Uh, so that they can apply the, all those skills that they've learned. So kudos to you, my brother. Um, it's been it's been a real good time having you on the show. How can people connect with you, John, man, if they want to, if they're interested in, in learning more about what you do, uh, maybe connecting with you from, from a coaching perspective? How do you, how do people reach out to you? Yeah, man, first off, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. You know, I, I, I truly, every time I, I, I get a chance to talk about my story, it's, it's that self-reflection is healing. So first off, I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to heal more. Give me yeah, an opportunity 
to speak my message um, and, and allowing me to add value to your entire network. So once again, thank you so much. The, the conversation was great. Um, I, I've done a lot of these. I have my own podcasts um, and I know I've been on good ones. I've been on bad ones. I've had good uh, guests. I've had you know some not so good guests and I appreciate you as an interviewer and, and as a human. So thank you so much. Um, so where to find me, kind of what I have going on as well. First off, if you guys are into podcasts, um, I have a podcast where I interview some of the best. I mean, Eric Thomas, um, Hal Elrod, Lisa Bilyeu, which is Tom Bilyeu's wife, um, some phenomenal, phenomenal people, Heath Evans, Super Bowl champ. Um, and I've interviewed them, and, and it's a really vulnerable podcast where we get vulnerable about the story, not always the glory. Um, and then I have my own episodes on there as well. So that's called Power of Progression. Go check it out. Um, you can check it out on any kind of uh, iTunes, Spotify, whatever you have. Um, secondly, if you want to go to my website, we have different uh, platforms. So I have a group coaching as well as I have an online course called The Ultimate You. So that's at johnmarone.com. And one more thing, I'm, I'm actually launching something here in 24 hours. So if anybody is interested, this is basically what it is. Um, I'm actually building up. So let's kind of rewind. I've always had an issue with back in the day with goal setting, right? I always like set these big goals and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, the goals would not happen or, or, you know, I want to stay consistent and it's just this vicious cycle. And I figured I needed to find a process that worked for not just me, but everybody. And yeah. so I spent many years figuring it out, like what that process looks like. So I have a four week workshop um, that's going to start uh, November 8th and it's going to be online. Or it's going to be a, a virtual call and it's going to be four weeks. And <clears throat> basically what it is week one, we talk about like, what does success look like for you in 2020? But first off, where are you at? Right. Let, let, let's identify the holes in a ship before we set sail. Um, and then let's figure out what success looks like in all six equities. So we can create balance, a.k.a. integration. Call two is now that we have our goals, how do we set it up into 90 day increments? So they're more attainable. Mm -hmm. How do we go ahead and find a why behind all those priorities so that we could actually like take action on what we want versus just saying what we want? And we get really clear in that week two. Week three is the part where we figure out who do we need to become? What are your habits now? What are your triggers? What do we need to do to replace those habits, those triggers? Auditing our circle like we talked about um, and just creating the person um, that you need to be to gain the success that you want. And then week four is an open Q&A. You also get my group coaching for free. And so I just want to let everybody know tomorrow I'll be launching that. Um, so if you guys are interested, you know, no, no pressure at all. Just reach out to me. Shoot me a message on Facebook um, and I'll give you any more details that you have or any questions. Um, and we can definitely go into it and get you signed up or uh, just go ahead and add value to you. So johnmarone.com, um, message me on Facebook if you're interested in my four-week ultimate year workshop, um, Power Progression Podcast, and uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, at Real John Marone. Pure gold, brother. Pure gold, man. I could literally talk to you for a couple more hours at least. <laughs> and uh, as usual, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know – that this show is literally changing agents' lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. If you want to jump on a 30-minute call with me, absolutely free for a business strategy session, go to meetmikewall.com. And that's it for this one, folks. Thanks so much, John. Thank you, brother. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. Absolutely. You too, man. All right, brother.